We are at Shula's Steak 2 in Miami Lakes. Barry Butel alongside Jim Mandich, your 19th season broadcasting Miami Dolphins football. How excited are you about the 19th? Plenty of enthusiasm, uh, plenty of reasons to be excited about this football team. Um, new young quarterback, Chad Henney, makes you uh, plenty of excited. Uh, year three of the, of the regime, of Bill Parcells, of Jeff Ireland, of Tony Sperano, the 11 and five start, the slide back to seven and nine. But, you know, the continued investment and building in the foundation, um, I'm very optimistic about, about this year. I have to get your thoughts about the, the uh, move that they made in acquiring Brandon Marshall. They've been looking for that, that big number one wide receiver and they got him. He, uh, he is terrific. Um, first of all, let's start with scale. I mean, he's a full 6'4 plus. He's bigger than 235 pounds. He's a muscle magazine kind of guy. Um, this is a guy that flip, flips off little defensive backs. Uh, the numbers are staggering. Three years in a row, 100 plus catches. I mean, that puts him in the company of a Larry Fitzgerald, of an Andre Johnson, really the elite receivers in the league. Um, and what does it mean? Um, it makes all the other receivers better. Um, we talked about it at length a year ago. We didn't have a true number one guy, a go-to guy. Well, we do right now. So it makes the receivers better. It makes Chad Henney better. And uh, it's going to make the running game better. So uh, a huge addition on the offensive side of the ball. Inversely, on the defensive side of the ball, number 58, Carlos Dansby, coming over from the Arizona Cardinals. Um, let's see. The first thing is... When you look at him, he's unusually, he's unusual for a middle linebacker. He's long, big feet, big wingspan. He's all of six foot four. It's almost like you're looking at an edge guy playing the inside position, and he brings that kind of athleticism. What he does as an inside backer is he's stout at the point, but as we saw in the playoffs last year, he gets his hands on a lot of footballs. He'll pick up balls. He'll force fumbles. He'll make turnaround plays that are unusual for inside backers. On the defensive side of the ball, when you mention Mike Nolan's name to a player, a big smile comes across just about every player on that side of the ball. They love what he is bringing to the defense. Um, I, I think the, uh, the best thing you can say about Mike Nolan's defense is the Dolphin offense through two weeks of preseason has been completely flummoxed. I mean, they haven't been able to pick up the blitzes. It's when the bus uh, you know, pulls up to the stadium, they start blitzing from different angles, corner blitzes, safety blitzes, a lot of disguises. Um, and, um, and I think the other thing that he's going to bring is he's going to clean up a secondary that gave up way too many big plays last year. I mean, it's just so frustrating uh, to grind and grind and grind for a score when you have the ball, uh, put your defense out on the field. And I think, I think the Dolphins gave up more plays of 40 plus yards than anybody in the NFL last year. So I think you're gonna see Mike Nolan clean that up and uh, overall have an improved defense. I say that with one qualification. We're looking at a lot of new people on the defensive side. Joey Porter is gone. Jason Taylor is gone. Aiken Adell is gone. Jabril Wilson is gone. So we have a lot of new faces, and particularly down the middle of that defense, and getting those young people like Koa Misi, Jared Odrick, up to speed is imperative. And the transition up front with Randy Starks moving inside, maybe, maybe not a huge worry, would you think? And not a worry in the least. Uh, Rand Randy Starks is a tough son of a gun. I mean, everybody talks like he's some kind of midget. He's, he's 305 pounds, and he's very active. And I, and I think, you know, you look at Kendall Langford, you look at Jared Odrick, you, uh, you look at Randy Starks, and you're looking at three guys that will be as quick and as athletic as any down three in the league. When you look at the AFC East and the AFC, I mean, and, and the Dolphins right in the mix. Jets had a, wow, what a run they had it to, in postseason play. Patriots getting a little bit older. Brady's back at quarterback. How do you see it? Well, when I look at the AFC East, it's frightening. 
Um, I mean, it's good. I mean, we look at our team and you say, you know, we made big steps and big strides forward, but the Jets were bold. And they've got a young quarterback in Mark Sanchez that they like. And they got Santonio, Santonio Holmes. And they've got Jason Taylor and, uh, and Ladanian Tomlinson. So there's no question they improved. And they were an ascendant team at the end of last year. And I always think as long as Belichick and Brady, the two Bs that are up there in New England, that's where you start. I mean, it's going to be an enormously competitive AFC East, and the AFC is going to be tough. And I look at the Dolphins' schedule, and you go, yikes. Um, you know, you open with the Bills, then you go to Minnesota, a powerhouse of a football team, and then you come right back with the Jets and New England on Monday night games. Um, I think, you know, that's why you see Tony Sperano emphasizing you know, come out of the blocks fast because you're going to be taking on heavyweights early. Well, we are here at Shula's Hotel and at Shula's Steak 2, where every Tuesday, for I don't know how many years, you'll tell me in a moment, the uh, Touchdown Club Tuesdays, it is a fantastic event held from right at precision time, and you love it, 12 noon to 1. It is a great business networking event. We do it on Shula time. You know, we quarter to 12, and we're, we're done at 1 o'clock. Um, the Miami Dolphin Touchdown Club, we formed it 10 years ago. And uh, we formed it for several reasons, but the biggest was philanthropical. Um, we wanted to create a fund um, for former players in dire need. And uh, we've been kicking off about $25,000, $35,000 a year. I think this year we'll go over the $300,000 mark. Uh, sent to the Miami Dolphin Foundation, earmarked for former players in dire need. Um, this is not Jim Mandich, this is the membership. Uh, this is the cooperation of the Miami Dolphins. They lend us that great brand. Uh, they make players available to us, former and current players. Um, we have at least two current players every week. We have former players. We have members of the media. We have important citizens in South Florida. Um, and win or lose, we have a real good time. Uh, also, also serves as a real nice business networking uh, uh, group. So it works on a lot of a lot of front, uh, fronts. You know, friends get together. We enjoy each other's fellowship. We do good things, and we laugh a lot. Uh, if you go to the Miami Dolphin website, look for the Miami Dolphin Touchdown Club. There's a page there where we have an application if you'd like to become. A member all the information is there and uh, we meet 16 weeks every Tuesday through the regular season and uh, and we have a blast and I, I would encourage anyone to join us and uh, join the festivities I know there's a number of people out there that get excited for the start of a Dolphin season but they also get excited for the start of the Miami Dolphins touchdown club we have uh, we have got a lot of members that have been with us all 10 years I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our title sponsors Publix, um, you know, what a great organization they are. They're always behind us, sharp business systems. Um, and Call to Racetrack also is going to be on board this year as a presenting sponsor. And they really give us, um, they give us that seed money to, to just do, uh, do things above and beyond. And, and we do uh, appreciate in a great way their, their sponsorship. I know you're excited for the start of a season, and I know you're excited to, to head back up to uh, Buffalo, New York for that season opener where you get that, that hotel room, right? Yeah, well, Buffalo is just a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks away, and, uh, you know, I, I always like we stay in the Adams Mark Hotel, and it's right there on Lake Erie. It's beautiful. a beautiful piece of real estate, and I always go to the front desk and reach into my pocket and pull out a $20 bill and tell the night clerk, please give me a room without a view. Those are my thoughts on Buffalo, New York. Thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate your time today. All right, Barry.